Hey guys, what's up? Good morning. I uh, was able to get out the door at 4 o'clock and oh, this is day 4 of the 30 day 30 videos challenge. I think based off of yesterday of talking about how to start YouTube, I wanted to go more in depth into that and explain about tips be provide you guys tips that i wish i knew before starting youtube so first one is on the list tip number one is uh searchable content searchable content means like i'll explain it better when i show you on the laptop but basically whenever you enter um, a specific term in the YouTube search, it normally pops up like ideas and usually the first one on that that pops up is a very popular search term. And it's very important to in your titles that you add those keywords into your titles. That way your content is on the top of the list whenever they search for that specific topic that you put on your YouTube title. So it's very important. And the reason why it's important is sometimes as a YouTuber, you start off just recording and making videos. And you through, you start working on the title and the thumbnail last. So this is what I wish I knew before I started YouTube is you want to start with your YouTube title and your thumbnail first. It will save you a lot of headache because number one, if, it's, if your content isn't as searchable and it's not high on the list and it doesn't uh, create a lot of views, Right? You just literally wasted so much time recording a video that's not searchable. So how do I find out or how do I go about like what tools can I use to help me with that? So number one, vidIQ. It's free and the tools, you can pay monthly, but the free tools that is provided with vidIQ has helped my channel grown a lot faster than it would without it. And it really helps as far as like with ideas, keywords, and just help you overall with searchable content. So that's what I recommend because it gives you a, a value number that you can Basically, it's a Chrome extension. So when you download it, you go onto uh, your YouTube channel, and then you just put your normal uh, title into the YouTube search. Once you put that in, it'll give you a grade. For example, 60 and up is, is considered good. And it tell you if it has less competition versus somebody left their water on or shine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> less content. Uh, if it's a very uh, competitive title or it's less competitive, you want to grab a title that's not that competitive but has a lot of views, like a minimum of 50,000 views. So let's move on to the second tip. Second tip is, should I record in 1080p or 4K? Wow, this was a one I wish I knew. So started it off, I thought that recording 4K would be great because, you know, it's 4K. People can watch it on their TVs. But what I realized, most of you actually watch the content through uh, your mobile phone, right? You guys watch it through the phone. So technically, 
most people that use their phone, they don't have Wi-Fi 24-7, which means they're not able to, to watch it in 4K. So does it really help you or benefit you? Because think about it, if you record in 4K, you got to have a lot of storage. Guys, 4K videos take up a lot of memory, okay? It literally zaps up your storage unit that you have. And I noticed a big difference since yesterday, since starting this 30 day challenge, I just started recording 1080p. Even right now I'm recording 1080p and it's night and day as far as memory use. So on the GoPro, on the, not the GoPro, the Osmo Pocket 3 that, so if I was record this in 4K, I would only have 30 minutes of footage. But since I'm recording in 1080p, I have an hour left of footage. So it's a big difference. It's like two times the difference as far as recording and also memory size that takes up in your storage unit. So there's an occasion to use both. Now, if you're recording, so the answer is both. I would use 1080p if you're vlogging like, like I am right now and providing tips to your audience and adding value to, to your audience is I would vlog in 1080p because there's no need to do in 4K at, at night, right? And then I would also do, as far as 4K, I would focus more on like a cooking channel or like you're at the market, somewhere like really nice that you really want the audience to see the details, like a cinematic movie, filming, you know, something that's really need to be detailed right i don't think all you see right now is just me right and, and you don't need to see that in 4k so that's what i recommend use both because it will save you a lot of storage memory in the long run and you will be more efficient for it all right let's move on to tip number three all right script or no script Okay, this one is also both. The reason why I say that is because whenever you're doing voiceovers, because there's times you're gonna have to correct what you say, I would write it out. And there's a purpose of uh, scripting, especially is when you want to uh, work on your intro, your hook, and it's very beneficial. And you know what, let me hang out here for a second. It's a lot, great lighting. And so whenever you do that, then, then you can um, focus more on, you know what, I don't wanna bother people here. Um, what was I saying? So scripting, yeah. It keeps you very uh, detailed, straight to the point and focus on the topic at hand. Whenever you don't script, you're all over the place. And so you may ask, okay, what if I'm not scripting? What can I do to help? Okay, number one, write out an outline like I have right here. Okay, I'm gonna show you. I don't know if this is gonna pick up because I never record straight off my phone. But it says tips before starting YouTube and I write out an outline, right? 10 tips, right? So the point is you write out your tips. Okay, I'm gonna walk this way because there's someone. Just, yeah, don't feel right. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Um, there's someone sleeping outside. I don't know if you guys can pick up on it, but back at the topic at hand, you know what, fuck it, I'm not, face it forward. I'm gonna put the camera this way, just in case, so you guys can see something happens. But what else I was saying, script or no script? Okay, so when you know script, yes, do an outline that way 
that way. Give me a second, guys. Just want to make sure I'm, I'm safe behind me. Uh, that way you can focus on the top of your hand because we go all over the place. So write an outline of what you're going to talk about in that video and just take a quick glance and, you know, speak freely, man. Don't, don't be very robotic. Be authentic because your audience can't tell if you're just making things up or just reading off the script. And so that's uh, what I would do if you're not doing no scripts. Also, let's see. The next tip, number four, is something beneficial about scripting is uh, what app do I use? Well, not beneficial, but what I'm saying is if you're going to do a script and you're walking like this, then I would use the app that I use. It's called, I don't know if you can pick up on this or not, right, guys, because I've never recorded off of my phone. Probably not. But yeah, my scripts, it looks like that on the home page. And basically, I'll show you how it works, all right? So it has like a, you, you would normally put this on a, a stand, right? And then you'll, you hit start, and then you see it start teleprompting, right? See that? All right? So it start doing that, and then you just read it off, right? So that's what I personally would use if you are scripting and you're vlogging and you can just, you know, what would help is you wear shades for one. <laughs> so the audience don't know that you're, you're scripting because they can't see your eyes if you're wearing shades. But also, and, and, and here's the thing, don't mean that they, your audience won't know because some people are like, even myself, like I might be bad at <laughs> reading script and just sound robotic, but that's why I try my best to not script and, and just go off of uh, the outline I've written now. So that's the app I would use. Another tip before starting YouTube would be copyright music. All right, so what I didn't know when we were out at Hannah Buffet, I didn't know that that was a thing. Like, I didn't know if you put on YouTube to have music in the background or if you're singing, that you'll, there's a possibility you'll get a copyright. Now, there's a difference between copyright and copyright strike. You have to know this because copyright meaning is the artist actually might allow you to use it and it's not a copyright strike it doesn't hurt your channel but at any time they could put it into a copyright strike but most likely it it doesn't end up being that case but it's possible okay so be aware of that and that is sort of like a but here's the thing so what happened is that video most likely if you are monetized, you will not make any revenue off that video. The artist can take claim and, and make revenue off of that your video and put their own ads. There's a dog. <laughs> uh, they will put, that's a huge dog. They will put their own ads on your video. <laughs> and this is a huge commercial place. Anybody know what that, that means? Comment down below what this place is because this gate is freaking massive. I would say that's at least 20 feet high. Yeah, 20 feet high. All right, let's get back on topic. Sorry guys, that dog really uh, threw me off. But he's way down there now. Um, what was I talking about? Let's see. Uh, copyright music. Oh yeah. So karaoke. 
So the difference, I talked about copyright, that the artist can put their own ads on your videos and you won't make revenue, which is fine because think about it, you still can get uh, subscribers, you can get uh, still add value to your audience and I think that's more important, like you're adding value to your audience and you're just trying to um, not promote their music because, and that's another thing, man, like, I really don't understand it. Like, you could be walking, like I'm walking right now, and then the restaurant decides to play Taylor Swift, right? And you're just like, oh gosh, I gotta get out of here because I know YouTube is not gonna like this, right? And. and it's like that, guys. Those are the things you're going to have to learn how to adjust and deal with. And then copyright strike is when the artists say, you don't own this music and we will put a strike on, on your video, which means for the next 30 days, if you have two more strikes, YouTube can literally delete all your videos from your channel. All right, this is very important. Just uh, yesterday, I watched uh, a YouTuber that I really enjoy watching. There's a runner behind me. He's a, he's a fella that I always run into when I'm running. But because I'm recording this video, I'm just walking it out until I finish. But Hopefully you guys can pick on it. But just yes, yesterday I uploaded a video and it got a copyright. And I wasn't too worried about it because it was a YouTuber that I follow. And you know, do this at your own risk, but she mentioned about her video, 50% has a copyright. And she's worried about YouTube deleting her channel and you know, and she has over 100,000 subscribers. And so that alone just provided value to me that honestly, I'm not scared to have a copyright. Now, if it was copyright strike, that's a different story. But it kind of settled my nerves a little bit. And I just want to tell you guys as well that, you know, there's, there's going to be times where you know, purposely, you can uh, have a, I mean, not purposely, but accidentally, you might, one of your videos might have a copyright. And I'm telling you to calm down. There's options to get rid of it. Number one, you can just remove the song in general. They'll give you an option to do it. It's very easy to do. Once it pops up a copyright, they'll have a pop-up window you can push to say, you want to remove that, that segment out or you could just remove the music itself. So if you're talking, it won't remove that part, but it will remove the music. But I think I've, yeah, I did it recently and I believe the audio is kind of, kind of not that great. So uh, honestly, I would just remove the segment if you think that would not hurt your video. But that's what I would do. I would just remove the segment and or you can replace it with a uh, YouTube music I think that would help better and it won't mess up the audio as much but yes so let's move on to the next step <sighs> oh I, did, I forgot to turn off turn on my watch uh -huh. it's all good so let's talk about tip number six free songs you can use on your channel. All right, so this is what I wish I knew. Um, it took a lot of research to find out uh, different websites that you could use. The main thing is you have to make sure when you use these music, you have to copy and paste the attributes into your description video, okay? But it's very important, okay? Listen, you have to put it into your description the attributes that they require in order to use their music. So off the top of my head, as I'm listening to their music, no copyright sounds, is something that I would recommend 
if you're into, you know, you guys, if you guys watch my videos, you guys should know that when I run, honestly, I like listening to up, upbeat, you know, EDM, electronic, trance, whatever you want to call it, music, okay? And it gets me hype, all right? So, and, and it's free, you know? And it's, for me personally, I like that, you know, music that's very good vibes and get you hyped. I hope my videos are getting you guys hyped, man. Honestly, like, I really try to make my videos not boring. But, yeah, those are, I'll, I don't want to edit, but if I edit, I could probably give you guys more <laughs> websites to use because I, I just honestly didn't remember off the top of my head. And I literally just wrote this outline like at 3.30 in the morning today, you know, which is, was 30 minutes ago. No, an hour ago now. So, uh, tip number seven. All right, these next tips are very important to not hurt your channel, all right? So, let me cross this road real quick so I won't be as loud. But you need to start off by picking your the right channel name in the very beginning. Now, the reason why I say this is because from experience, all right, if you guys follow me from the beginning, and if you're new here, okay, originally my channel name was called Run With Philip. But if you don't know, I got, we, me and Sapon, which is my wife, we got into a moto accident and I got injured. So I, I, and I found out after one month that it could be three months. No, I found out from the doctor in the very, sorry. I found out from the very beginning that it could be a, a long road to recovery, right? I had a AC joint separation. My ligament was torn off off my left shoulder. And so, and it was pretty bad. <laughs> and so I was, I thought for the next three months, I couldn't run, right? And for those of you that don't know, those, this past what currently, let's say, close to 11 weeks, it's been very difficult. But, um, the point is, I didn't know if I was gonna even run anymore because I know myself. Let's just be honest, all right? I'm gonna be honest. I'm, well, you know, I'm just gonna stick to the topic at hand because you, you guys don't wanna know what's really going on. All right, so let's just stick to the points. But if you guys wanna know, comment down below. <laughs> uh, so why I mentioned about picking the right channel name. So the point is picking the right channel name because when I change it to just Philip, which is how you would say my name in Cambodian, well, at least that's what my mom would, would call my name. No, well she, would, well, she would get mad for the most part. She would say Alip. In Cambodia, they always say like your last I don't know if I'm saying this right, but your last synonym. So like feel lip, so they'll just say lip, or so pawn, you yeah, have pawn, the last part, okay? So they'll just they'll keep it short. Um, one syllable, I hope I, did I say, yeah, syllable. And so I changed it to feel lip because I felt that I was in a transition period of doing videos like this, for example. Um, and that's what I meant. So someone's walking around listening to music without using a Bluetooth. Let me keep my distance. <laughs> Sorry guys. I, I don't want this video to be copyright. 
I might have to cut that out. Um, man, I can't, I can't walk that way. You're going to hear that song. You got it loud. Let me walk back. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, no disrespect, boo. It's just YouTube. They're very strict with music. Um, so what I mean about like sticking to the right channel name is because once I change the name, um, honestly, you should probably do a community post before you change your name, number one. But um, I didn't. And I think that really hurt my channel once I changed my name, to be honest. But I felt like in the long term, it's beneficial because I want to keep the name short and simple and one word. Easy for people to remember. And that way, if I do videos similar to this. It would be, um, it would be, uh, basically I won't, I won't be stuck, stuck to one niche, right? I, I, I can make all types of different videos. Originally I wanted to just use my name. Unfortunately, someone is using that on YouTube, um, which is unfortunately, but it is what it is. I'm happy with Philip, and even right now I'm only getting like 30 views. It's okay, guys. Um, just keep pushing out content. And so let's go on to the next tip. All right, so these are very important, all right? So you don't hurt your channel again. So tip number eight, should you put affiliate links in your descriptions? All right, should you put links in your affiliate, should you put affiliate links in your description videos, in your YouTube video description? Okay, so based off the analytics, once I started at Amazon affiliate links, I noticed my impressions started to drop. I'm not talking about like a little bit, it dropped a lot. And so, with that being said, um, it dropped so much that basically it went from 120,000 impressions to 6K. Yes, 6K. It, it, it went down that bad. And what I found out was is YouTube doesn't like it when you put uh, links that get people to get off of the YouTube channel or get off the YouTube app. So that could be, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this now because this is what's happened to me personally. I'm not saying it's going to happen to you, but I'm saying this is what happened to me. You guys can uh, do, do follow these tips or not, but this is what happened to me. And I just want to get you guys the most up-to-date tips that I can, that I personally went through just recently. So, and I really think a lot of these YouTube videos right now is very outdated and honestly repetitive. All right, let's be real, man. Like I, I've watched so many videos on how to start YouTube and I would follow these tips and it doesn't help. And so like, start to write a script, right? For, for example, I'm gonna go back to the tip about script or no script. All right, my most viewed video, it's not scripted, but a YouTuber would, would always say, it's better to script your videos. That's not the case, guys. Even this video, I'm not scripting. I don't know where it would end up, hopefully more than 30 views, but I hope that I'm providing value to you guys all for free. And I hope you guys enjoying this. So let's get back to the tips again. So like I said, with the affiliate links, you know, YouTube's don't like uh, getting people off of their app. So I would wait, okay? This is what I do. This is what I'm personally doing. I would wait to put affiliate links after you get monetized, okay? Because what, what you gotta know is once, it's a real thing. Small channels and big channels, 
YouTube promote big channels. All right, they promote small channels, but not as much, not as much impressions. So why not just wait, okay? Get your 1,000 uh, subscriber, get your 4,000 watch time hours, then put your affiliate links from Amazon or whatever it is, whatever it is, okay? And just focus more on just giving value to your audience and building a community. So, wow, we are at 30 minutes. All right, so tip number nine. If you want to start a channel, then you either need to fall into two categories, educate or entertain. All right, so what I mean by that is, this will help you out if you want to start YouTube. Either your channel, either need to educate your audience or entertain your audience, moped. Well, what do you mean by that, Philip? All right, so what I mean is, if you notice, a lot of the view, most viewed channel, either they're entertaining, right? Like, think about Mr. Beast. Do you think he's an educate or entertainment? Entertainment, right? So you, so that's a perfect example of entertainment. You guys, if you guys watch Mr. V's videos, very entertaining, full of, full of surprises, big explosions, and how can you go about entertaining people? Number one, I would suggest on top of the list is doing challenges, right? That's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing challenges that I need to do 30 videos in 30 days. That is not an easy challenge. Trust me, guys. Um, it's not easy. I'm an introvert. I don't like to talk in front of the camera, but I'm doing my best to do that, right? And so um, that's what Mr. B do. He does challenges. He get people to do challenges and there's a prize at the end. So, oh gosh, someone banging music in the oh, I gotta walk back this way. That's part of YouTube though, man. I, I, I don't want YouTube to uh, copyright my video. So, all right, so I talked about entertainment, educate. What I mean by educate is means like how-to videos. How-to videos, like, how do you how to start a YouTube channel? Okay, <laughs> how to how to cook a certain particular food? How to uh, how to how to be a software engineer? Those are all educate videos, right? And you know how to how to speak. Come on, this is, those are, these are just ideas I'm just throwing out there for you. You guys are stuck with what how-to videos are. And so, <clears throat> yeah. So we're talking about educate, entertainment. Let's go straight to our last point. Our last point, just start, all right? And some of you might say, how can I start? Because your last video you were talking about $800 equipment for the camera, microphones, and then another $800 for your laptop. And by the way, the software that I use, DaVinci Resolve, is free. So that, that, that should help you out. It's free, literally, it's no charge. DaVinci Resolve, they have a free version you can download and edit your videos. But what you gotta understand is, most likely, you're watching this video on your phone. And it's one of the most powerful tools that you can use, is your phone. You can re just start off recording with your phone. I wish I did that, honestly, because um, you can record, most phones can record in 4K or 1080p. And so start off with that, guys. Don't stop limiting yourself. If you haven't started YouTube yet, start, man. Seriously, guys, and I think based from day three yesterday, I'm gonna 
try my best to continue to do videos like this, help educate on how to go about starting YouTube, and go from there, man. So with that said, man, I hope you guys like this video. Like, share, and subscribe. My name is Philip, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one on how I would, how, what tips I would provide before I, what, what would I do before starting a YouTube channel? And I hope you guys enjoyed these 10 tips. You guys have a blessed one. Love you guys. And if you guys want to continue to support this channel, please watch my other videos. Man, I really need that 4,000 watch time hours. Um, and like I said, subscribe guys. Um, right now we're at 190 subscribers and yeah, you guys have a good one.